You are not a man that you should lie. God, you remain the same forever. Kings will come and go. Generations will arise and they will fade away. But you remain God forever. You are the covenant keeping God. There is no God like you. You are the covenant keeping God. Men, every now and then, they break their covenants. Even covenants we call holy. They just wake up one morning and say, I am not in again, I'm going. But Lord, you have never told us that you are tired of us. You have never explained to us any day that for circumstances beyond control, I could not meet up with my promises. Father Lord, we worship your holy name. Thank you for the promises you have made to us. Because we believe that because you said it, you will surely do it. Because you never say anything by mistake. For all the things you have said concerning us, Father, we say thank you. And now, Lord, we ask that you soak our hearts in the ocean of your word. And let your word well up inside of us like living springs of waters. And let joy overflow out of us. Let it overflow in our lives. Let it flow to our neighbors. Let it flow to every compound member. Every member of our compound, let it flow to them. Let it flow to the society. Let it flow to the whole world. To the praise and glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Be seated. If you have hands, please clap them for Jesus Christ. The the topic of today is the covenant keeping God. Covenant keeping God. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter seventeen. We will read from verse one to seven. If you have your Bible, please open it. Genesis 17, 7. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, that is 99, the Lord approached, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name, and more be called Abraham. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed, and thy seed after thee. In their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A covenant is... A contract. This time around, this covenant we are looking at is a contract between 
God himself and man. And it has some promises from God himself and some level of terms that man on his side will definitely kill. It has some requirements of conduct on the side of the man. Uh, we have a lot of covenants in the Bible, but we have two major covenants, which we call Old Covenant and New Covenant. Do you have a Bible with you there? Do you have a copy of the Holy Bible? Can you lift it up? Let me see. This Bible is made up of how many parts? Old and New what? Old and New Testament. You can still call it covenant because the word testament means covenant. It means agreement. So each time you pick your Bible, say, Lord, this is your covenant with me. It's a covenant. The first one, first covenant so far, so far, was a covenant between God and Adam and the earth. God had a covenant. The covenant was the agreement God had with Adam and Eve. And what was the covenant? I give you this place. My promise is that I have made you the ruler of the whole earth. Over everything, creepy thing, everything that flies, even including the ones in the sea, those ones bigger than you in size. You are their ruler, you are their head. Take charge of everything I have created. And what you are going to do for me is that you are going to dress this garden and also this tree in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it. That is your assignment. But Ed, Adam broke that covenant and he was driven out. God sought for men he would have covenants with. It came to the, uh, the time of Noah. God had a covenant with Noah and God kept to his word. Just imagine God speaking to you one day from the sky or in the dream that I'm going to destroy this world. Stop whatsoever thing you are doing. Go and look for materials and build a ship. Build an ark on a dry ground. It looks foolish, but God made his promise of salvation to Noah that I'm going to save you. Despite that I'm going to destroy everything in the world, I am going to save you. And you are going to build an ark. I'm not going to send angels from heaven to take you to the sky. But build your own ark. And Noah followed up the terms of the covenant. And he, eight of them, they were saved. And God also proceeded from there because God knows that man, man, human beings, they doubt a lot and that they are rebellious. God put a rainbow in the sky that this sign is the mark of my covenant. Each time you see the rainbow, it is a covenant between you and God himself. And the earth, that God is not going to use water to destroy this world again. And how many times has God used water to destroy the world again? Any other time? When you look up, you see white clouds. What you see there is water. Everywhere, water is what you see. But God is still keeping his covenant. He's still holding that water. His heart is never tired to hold that water. They have become ice block there. Sometimes the rain will fall. You see that there are hail falling, stones, blocks, ice blocks falling. God kept them there. And till Jesus Christ will return, God will still keep to that his covenant. That is promise. And that is how God is. He's a promise maker and a promise keeper. Shout hallelujah. God had a covenant with Abraham. It was God who initiated it. That Abraham, this is what I have proposed in my heart to do for you. And at 99 years old, God was making a promise that, listen, I am going to make you a father of many nations. Who is a daughter or a son of Abraham? Yeah, if you are a child of Abraham, let me see your hand. So I'm talking about your great, great, great grandfather. God said, I am going to make you 
a father of many nations. There is no nation in the world today where you don't have a child of Abraham. There are children of Abraham either by birth or by adoption, by adoption through Jesus Christ. We are all children of Abraham. We are the spiritual Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God said, what is impossible in your eyes and in the sight of human being is what I am going to do. There are times God could leave a child, his own child, to pass through some difficult situations and even allow that child to get to the end of the road. Whereby when you look at this side, you see the Red Sea. When you turn your back, you see the Egyptians coming with their sharrows and their weapons. Meanwhile, physically, you are armless. And in that situation, he will just show up. That is the kind of God we have. There is a song that says that the, it, nothing can be difficult with God. That even when it becomes difficult, impossible with men, with God, all things are what? All things are possible. If God has made any promise to you, that God will keep it. Do we have anybody here? If they have broken your heart before, let me see your hands up. If somebody has ever broken your heart before. Oh, they are very few, very, very few. Very, very few. If they have broken your heart before, let me see your hand. Can it be your parents? I'm not talking about engagements alone. Any kind of heartbreak. Somebody betraying your trust. Either your business partner or even your sales girl. Eh? If they have broken your heart before, let me see your hand up. Eh, okay. Eh, is God in your list? Is God in the list of the heartbreakers? Eh? If God is in the list, let me see your hands up. If God has ever broken your heart, God broke your heart before. Nobody. So you mean God is not a heartbreaker? Eh? God is a heart mender. Jesus Christ said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will do what? Amen. Anytime they break your heart, he said, Come to me, I'm going to mend it. Don't go and buy a sniper. I will mend the heart for you. Because of the covenant of God, sometimes when, um, do you know when I read sometimes or I listen to news and they call some places that I heard for the first time only in the Bible, I will say to you, the Bible is so real. The Bible is so real. Thank God for those of you who have been to Israel and are back. You know, there are two Bibles. Eh? There are two Bibles. There is this one we read. Eh? This one we read it, we study it. But there is another one. You enter inside the Bible. Eh? And you touch things. You hold things. You enter the tomb you read about. The tomb of Jesus. That Bible is in Israel. That Bible is a land of Israel. When you get there, the things you read, you don't read them there. You see, you touch, you smell them, you feel them, you walk, you swim in the river Jordan. That is another Bible there. That one is a living one. It's a living, it's a live Bible. God promised the children of Israel and if you tell me any nation that is as stubborn as Israel, there is no nation in the world. Very stubborn. Each time, I mean, they are very, very stubborn. Because Jesus Christ said, if the miracles that have been done in you have been done in Sidon, eh, they would have repented. So, I'm not saying that if you make another comparison, not that one. If you compare what God has done in Israel, the heritage they have, they, these people have experienced God on earth. They're supposed to be the most obedient all over the world. 
bent upon their rebellion against God. Just imagine God said, kill all these enemies. Take away their lands. They said, no, Lord, we will not kill them. Even some, when they see beautiful girl, they say, this one, why will you die? If I kill you, what in I gain? Enter my boat. Third wife. When they see so strong men, why will this one die? If I kill you, what in I gain? Come. You will fetch firewood for us. That was how they saved bunches of communities. And today, the land of Israel is just so tiny, very tiny. The Arabs, Arab nations are covering everywhere. Just May, last month, this is June, right? Just last month, the Arab nations, they fired about 600 rockets into Israel. This last month, 600, I was following the story up, 600 into a small, tiny land. And do you know how many people they were about to, they, they, they succeeded in killing? They were able to kill only three people, only three Israel. Only three Israelites died. Only, maybe, the stubborn ones. Or probably, it was the will of God. 600, do you know what you call rockets? Bomb! Those ones that fly. Pew! Those ones they fire from afar. Guided missiles. They were able to kill only three. And about a hundred of them got injured. Today, when a small Boko Haram tie bomb, how many people die? Eh? You see people dying anyhow. This one is rockets. They are firing them. 600 flying. Fume, fume. In fact, if anything fly like that in Nigeria, eh? a partition will finish many, many people before the rockets will land. The God of Israel is still alive. It is only God who can do this. That you fire 600 rockets into a nation and the people are still alive. And even people will go and beg Israel, please, don't retaliate. That small nation, God is God indeed. God is alive. He has never failed before. There is no record in this world that God ever failed. I want to ask you a question. I put this question to you. If God had existed from everlasting till now, is it in your time that he will start practicing how to fail? Is it in your situation that God is going to start how to fail? How to start how to practice how to fail. Is it in your time? Are you the one? Is it your situation that is going to change the nature of God? How many of us say, God, God, why have you not done this? Why have you not done that? Why have you not done this? Why have you not done that? God is more than able to save us. God. It's more than, with my little experience, I don't question God anyhow. If some sudden things happen, the best I could do is, God, what is happening? What, even when I have no answer from God that moment, I know that God is working out something. I don't blame God anyhow. Do not use your small mathematics that you learn in Igudu primary school. To come and start calculating the ways of God. God is bigger than that. God is too big for our uh, psychological analysis. We can never analyze God. God is too big. He does not fail. Moses was approached by the Israelites on two occasions. Moses, we have no water. Our animals are dying. Even by the waters of uh, Mara and Meribah. They had a challenge. The only water that was there was bitter. Moses went to God. Do you know where God referred Moses to? He didn't say go to the sea, the Red Sea. He didn't say that. He said, 
go to that rock. Can water be found in a rock? He said, go to the rock and strike it and water will come out. The second time, he said, speak to the rock. That is how God is. When God is by your side, let the whole world gather. Let the whole nations gather. They must surely fail. God said that because they are not gathering for your goods, they shall surely do what? Behold, they shall surely gather, but not by me. Whosoever gather together against thee shall do what? Shall fall for thy sake. Let me tell you why God cannot fail. Isaiah 49 verse Verses 15 and 16, God said, Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, they may forget their little babies, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have given thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. God said, in writing your name, you remember that you are the apples of uh, the apple of God's eye. You know that the apple in the eyes of God, He does not allow anybody to touch His eyes. That is where He said He has put you. He places you in His own eyes, the eyes with which He sees. This time around, in this Isaiah forty nine fifteen and sixteen, God is saying. He took an object, sharp object, and engraved you. This thing you see here, this right up. Cameraman, pick it. This right up here. This is engravement. Engrave. is to dig and make inscription. This is engraving. This is engraving. God said, because of my love for you, I took my hand is like to this is not a physical one it is just a description of the gravity of consciousness and love that God has for you he said I have engraven you on the palms of my hand and every day we look at our palms we look at our hands every day every time in fact the number one place that we look at all of our bodies, the number one place we look at, mostly the palms, our hands. And that is what God said. God is not a man. There are so many people who are dying. People are killing themselves. A lot of people are committing suicide because uh, covenants have been broken. Business partners betraying a lot of people. In fact, I heard some time ago that uh, one man took money to South Africa, built refinery, and then the person that uh, signed the contract with him uh, willed everything to the children and went and committed suicide. Now, story I tell you. No, go ask me later. Now, story. People can even kill themselves. Just to make sure they put you into a problem to break your heart. People can sacrifice their own lives because they want to break your heart. Because they want to break the covenant, they can change their nation and move to another place. Move from one state to another. Quit their job because they want to put you into misery. But God does not break his covenants. Even in the evening, in the night, in the noon, in times of danger. In fact, the kind of person God is, if he has any covenant with you, and you have problems, and you refuse to go to him for solution, he will be angry. Say, you had problem. Why didn't you come? I'm angry with you. But in the case of man, when you have problem, in fact... That is when your friends will reduce. In the time of calamity, your friends 
We now reduce. Each time you call, some may even block your line. Some will behave. In fact, I read a WhatsApp message, a chat. Uh, the person said, how are you? He said, I'm fine. Um, I want you to do me a favor. He said, what is the favor? He said, I want you to borrow me so so amount of money. He said, in fact, I did not see your message. You are chatting with somebody. He said, I did not see the message. So how are you able to reply? Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. The Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. If you are having challenges, go to God. You have a covenant with him. I'm talking about the covenant a bit before we round up. A covenant is an agreement. An agreement means a contract. You sign. And God himself signs his own. The first covenant, uh, which we call the Old Testament, was entered with the blood of animals. But in the New Testament, God used the blood of his son Jesus Christ to enter this covenant with us. So the ink, the ink with which God signed the contract was the blood of Jesus Christ. And our own part with which we sign the contract, is our faith and our confession. And what do we need to do? Is that we must be born again. Read John chapter 3. For except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Come and let me give birth to you so that you can be a part of the vine. I am the vine. My father is a vine dresser and ye are the branches. Come and be part of me. And once you are a part of me, whatsoever thing you need in any challenge, when you pass through the seas, I will be there. Through the rivers, I will be there. Even through the fire. Me, God, I will be where? I will be there with you. That is the promise of God. A lot of us, we can't even trust God. We don't trust God anymore. That we want to test first. A lot of us, we can't even trust God. When God says wait, many of us don't want to wait. We want to look at the pressure from human beings. You are a lady, God says, wait, I am coming, please wait. You have no job, people are coming to push you into Yahoo and Yahoo Plus. God says, wait, please do what? There are men who steal their husband, their wife's money to go and play merry beds. They steal money, they have no job. They believe that they can't wait for God anymore. Some men will volunteer that, hey, honey, I will be the one to go to the market this evening. I want to go and buy this. You know you are tired, you have been working since morning. Let me just go and buy this. Because you want to get small money. For Lotto, for Mary Beth, for Kalo Kalo. And you are now reducing yourself to a market man. Because you can't wait for God. A lot of people now lie because they need some money. In fact, Mary Beth and Lotto has taken over worry. Even with the advent of these our smartphones. I used to have one uncle who used to play pool. Pool. And the pool pulled him down. Anytime you go to him, you greet him. Uh, he was in the military, retired. Each time you greet him with the go go, he will not answer you because he's calculating mass. I believe that by now he should be doing enough mass in his grave. Calculate mass, mass, mass. Mm. He will raise his head. Hey, welcome. Go back. The next 30 minutes, you will be waiting for him. That was how he played pull, 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 pull. Until he pull, pull him down. Not even on the floor. Into the pool. To 
today is Mary Beth lots of different kind of things because people don't trust God who can provide. God told Abraham, go and sacrifice your only son for me. And when Abraham was to obey, when he was to complete the obedience by killing his son after tying him, God said, look, he provided the lamb for the sacrifice. And Abraham said, God from now to me, I am going to give him another name as Jehovah Jireh. The God that provides. How many of us trust God that God can provide? How many of us trust God? Wave your hands, wave your hands. Say, I trust you, Lord. Say, I trust you, Lord. Do not mistake humans for God. Do not make any mistake and give the kind of trust you have for God to humans. I'm telling you that trust God with all your heart. But when it comes to human being, please be very, very careful. Be very, very, very careful. When it comes to man, be very, very careful. Because men, they are dangerous. The heart of man is deceitfully wicked. It's so deceitful and it is wicked. Nigeria now ranks the fifth country with the highest rate of suicide all over the world. That was 2018. This year, it has escalated. People no longer have trust in God anymore. People no longer have trust. And see, I tell you one thing. Don't give your heart to adults who still have the hearts of children. Babies, my son, adults, you see, driving bears in town. Their minds, they are not yet matured. And so people have concluded that all men are the same. You have not tried all men. All men are never the same. All women are not the same. If you use a spiritual microscope to look at some men, some are still wearing pampas. But when you see them physically, they are putting on jeans. But look with your spiritual eyes, you will see pampas inside. People who cannot trust God with their heart. People who can disobey God anytime. You want them to trust you and obey you and be faithful to you. People who can be faith, faithless, unfaithful to God. You want them to be faithful to you. It's a lie. It's not possible. Please, let us trust God. As a covenant keeper, he will never, ever disappoint us. Let's be on our feet. We have to pray. Lord, you have never failed before. From everlasting to everlasting, you remain God. We therefore proclaim once again, even those who have been heartbroken, those who are about going to commit suicide, who are contemplating, should I kill myself? This embarrassment is too much. How can this man come and engage to me in public? And now he's telling me that he's no longer interested in private. Lord, help your children. And for every promise that you have made, we ask that by your power you will fulfill your promise. And now we remember the nation of Israel. Continue to stand by them. And we who are the spiritual Israelites, Lord, fulfill your promises in our lives. Give us a heart to obey you, to keep to our own side of the contracts. In Jesus' name we pray.